Hey friends, today we're gonna to talk about something cool, something that I didn't really know, so I learned something new, so I wanted to share it with you. Uh, in courses uh, previously when I've taught people how to needle the sternocleidomastoid muscle, I've told you to have the patient perform the valsalva maneuver, and then uh, their jugular vein will pop out, just like you see in this little video here, where he performs a valsalva maneuver and the jugular vein pops out. I can easily mark that jugular vein and then uh, identify where that jugular vein is. That way I don't stick a needle in it, right? Because that leaves a big bruise, it leaves a big hickey. Nobody wants a big bruise or a big hickey on their neck uh, from a needle in the uh, external jugular vein there. So uh, in some of the courses, sometimes we just can't find people's external jugular vein. Maybe they've got too much adipose tissue, uh, is what I just always assumed, or uh, you know, maybe they had a weird course and I just couldn't see it. So uh, I found out that people have jugular vein variations. There's a whole lot of different types of jugular vein variations. Uh, so that's what I wanna talk to you about a little bit today. And then uh, some people that you can't really find their jugular vein, guess what you can use to help? an ultrasound, diagnostic ultrasound, and you can use that to help identify that vascular structure. That way you don't stick a needle in it. It's just one of the cool things that you can use an ultrasound for. So uh, this should be a pretty cool video. Thanks for watching. As I mentioned, there are a lot of variations of that external jugular vein. Uh, they exist in the neck, according to this article in 2018. You really just got to be aware of some of those possible variations when you're needling uh, anywhere in the neck, especially the sternocleidomastoid, because you don't want to stick a needle uh, right through that external jugular vein. The junction of the posterior division of the retromandibular vein and the posterior auricular vein usually form the external jugular vein, and that drains eventually into the subclavian vein. So some variations reported by uh, Dalip and colleagues in 2018 include a duplication of the external jugular vein before it penetrates the middle uh, one-third of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. You can have a double external jugular vein uh, emerging from the parotid gland as two independent veins. So you can have two external jugglers on the side of your neck. Uh, and then in some cases, they've identified three external jugular veins running in a parallel fashion before it drained into the subclavian vein. That was identified in a male cadaver on the right side. So you can have a lot of variations of the jugular vein. In this article, they've uh, found eight frequently reported external jugular vein variations. Uh, and we're going to look at those on these next uh, two slides here. So to orient you a little bit in that first... Uh, picture on this slide. The uh, facial vein at the top, the posterior auricular vein is beneath that. The internal jugular vein, obviously beneath the uh, sternocleidomastoid there. External jugular vein in this first image is just on the, the uh, more posterior side of the sternocleidomastoid. And then of course it identifies the sternocleidomastoid muscle as well. And then you can see the variation on the second image. You can see the variation on the third image. And you can see the uh, like tree-like variation in the fourth image. And then when you look at the fifth image, a, a whole different type of variation. The sixth image, uh, I feel like I've seen pretty, uh, you know, almost in at least every other class when we're needling the, the face in the area of the sternocleidomastoid and we look for the jugular vein, we just can't find it on somebody. Again, I just assumed that it was something that I couldn't see. I assumed that it was something, you know, the patient couldn't valsalva hard enough to make it present. Uh, however, most likely they just had one of these common external jugular vein variations where the... Uh, Basically, it's all underneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and then it, it branches at the very top and doesn't even cross the sternocleidomastoid like we traditionally think that the sterno, that the uh, uh, external jugular vein crosses the sternocleidomastoid. But uh, obviously, as you can see in image six there, it does not have to. Uh, so that's one of the variations that you see. And then you see the, the seventh variation, which includes a double external jugular vein with some branches. And then the eighth variation, which also includes a double uh, external jugular vein uh, running in a parallel fashion there. So when you can't see where that vein is, I guess you could just close your eyes and hope for the best and hope that you don't give the patient this uh, you know, big bruise and a big hickey on the neck. Or if you have access to an ultrasound machine, or if you have one of those cool little handheld ultrasound machines, which aren't terribly expensive, uh, you can just break out the ultrasound. So when in doubt, break the ultrasound out. So this diagnostic ultrasound is an amazing tool to identify vasculature and certainly to identify vascular flow. So there's actually two uh, conventional types used in musculoskeletal ultrasound to identify vascular flow. That includes power Doppler and color Doppler. So power Doppler, uh, just to give you a little bit of the definitions of both of these, uh, it encodes the power of the ultrasound signal. So it's not a velocity or direction, it's just uh, amplitude, it's just power. Uh, it's sensitive to vascular movement in any direction, and it's only one color. So it's either red or like this red-orange color. And with color Doppler, that's going to provide information about directional movement. 
uh, of the vascular flow. There's going to be two colors. There's going to be red and there's going to be blue. It's uh, very easy to assume that, okay, red means artery, blue means vein, and that is simply not the case. Uh, red and blue does not indicate vein versus artery. It simply indicates a uh, flow, whether the flow is directed towards the ultrasound transducer head or if it's directed away from the ultrasound transducer head. So if uh, flow is going towards the head, then it may be uh, it may be red, and if it's going away from the head, then it may be blue. That's going to also depend on how you have your ultrasound transducer head oriented. There's always a little indicator uh, that can help you with orientation, but uh, some sometimes people tend to move those around to, to give you the image that you want. Uh, so it's going to always depend on uh, you know the direction that your transducer is pointed in and the direction of the vasculature in relation to the transducer, which is also in relation to which way you've got the thing pointed. So it can get kind of complicated. Let's look at a couple of images, Let's, and then we'll look at a live ultrasound of me ultrasound in my own neck, uh, my own sternocleidomastoid, and looking for my jugular vein. It's kind of fun to watch. If you haven't seen a diagnostic ultrasound image, then this may look like a snowstorm or an old fuzzy TV. But let me orient you a little bit. The area at the very top of the screen is the subcutaneous tissue, and then right beneath that is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And then the top circle that you see is going to be the jugular vein, and then the bottom circle that you're going to see is going to be the carotid artery. Remember from the slides just a, a few minutes ago that not everybody has an external jugular vein that goes on top of their sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is a picture of my neck, an ultrasound of my neck, and I do not have an external jugular vein that goes atop of my sternocleidomastoid muscle. So that's why the diagnostic ultrasound is crucial to be able to identify the area uh, and not stick a needle in it. Now I've added just a little bit of color to help you uh, delineate the layers a little bit better. So the very top layer, that light pink color, is going to be the subcutaneous tissue. The sternocleidomastoid muscle, I've shaded that orange color. And then the jugular vein, I have shaded blue. And then the carotid artery is what I've shaded red. Now let's look at the ultrasound of the sternocleidomastoid. You can see the carotid artery below, and then you see the jugular vein that was just compressed. That's what's interesting about veins is you can take the transducer and you can press against the sternocleidomastoid and the vein will collapse. You can see the vein disappearing there, but the carotid artery stayed wide and patent. You can't collapse that carotid artery. Now we'll have a quick look at what color Doppler does to the image. You can see the carotid artery is surrounded by the green box, and then the color Doppler is indicating a large amount of flow and that carotid artery. And then I compress the jugular vein and then I, I lift off the jugular vein. You can see it reappear in this image. Just in case you don't remember how to needle the sternocleidomastoid, I wanted to show you that in this video as well real fast. Or you could go to our regular YouTube channel and search for sternocleidomastoid, or you could click on our playlist section and sternocleidomastoid is included in the face and TMJ section of the uh, YouTube playlist. This demonstration is intended as a resource for previous students and licensed clinicians who can perform dry needling in their practice acting jurisdiction. Please do not attempt dry needling without proper licensure and training. And of course you remember the precautions because that's what we've been talking about, the jugular vein and then all the vital structures in that cervical triangle, uh, anterior and posterior cervical triangle. Uh, you can use a 15 to a 30 millimeter needle, just have the patient lift their head and then you can identify the sternocleidomastoid and then of course you always maintain a clean technique, always use gloves, always perform an alcohol wipe down. And then again, have the patient lift their heads. So you can grasp the muscle belly. You've already identified the area of the jugular vein, either with that Valsalva maneuver or with a diagnostic ultrasound. And then you just tap a needle in, and then you can piston or leave in situ.